the Canadian TSP hired a sophisticated Dutch salvage ship, Queen of the Netherlands. The vessel has a gigantic vacuum system capable of dredging even the tiniest pieces of Swiss Air 111 from the ocean floor. A mixture of seawater, silt, and aircraft were pumped into the ship's hold. This cargo was then pumped into a specially constructed reservoir on shore. When the water drained away, investigators find another million pieces of the aircraft. Any one of them may hold the clue to what caused the catastrophic fire. The painstaking sorting once again resumed. Finally, after 15 months, they found what they'd been seeking, a single faulty wire. In March of 2003, America's NTSB issued its final report and made 23 air safety recommendations, including higher standards for wiring tests, teaching crews aggressive in-flight firefighting strategies, and the conclusion that flammable materials did not belong on commercial aircraft. The rate of progression in this airplane, I think, surprised us and surprised uh, others. Uh, and uh, that's why we emphasize, again, the importance of um, raising the bar on the flammability standards for materials used in airplanes. Ian Shaw waited four years for the report to reveal the fatal flaw that took the life of his daughter. But the truth has not diminished his anger at Swiss Air. There has to be accountability. If you are involved in wrongdoing, you must be held accountable. And you must declare your sense of respons responsibility. Otherwise, you are hiding. And you are hiding, in this case, behind the flag of Switzerland. I think it's unbelievable. After the release of the report, the thermal acoustical insulation material that had significantly contributed to the rapid spread of the fire on Flight 111 was removed from approximately 1,500 airplanes, banned from future planes. The industry now conducts much tougher flammability tests on materials used in aircraft. This major overhaul was designed to ensure that what took place on Swiss Air 111 would never happen again.